All right, so we were talking about the body fluid compartments and in that we covered in our last lecture that what are the various compositions of the electrolytes and non electrolytes in various compartments, what causes various amount of fluids to stay in various compartments. So, today what uh, in this lecture what we will talk about is really important and again clinically you would encounter this very often. What we want to know is let us say we have received a patient and we are trying to understand what is the um, body fluid volume inside the intravascular system or in the interstitium or in the intracellular fluid. So, we are trying to understand the body water or body water distribution. The question is that we already have a formula we say that a person's body weight take that and take the 60 percent of that and that is the total body water then take that 60 percent and two third is present in the intracellular fluid. So, make that a mathematical calculation and the remaining is in the in, uh, sorry this was intracellular fluid the remaining is in the extracellular fluid and then have one fourth and uh, three fourth and that is the distribution here. Why not we just use that formula to understand what are the body fluid compartment sizes or volumes. Well, here is the thing if you have received a patient then he is probably undergoing some pathology and if we are talking about pathological situation then there is no guarantee that these distributions are intact and these compositions are intact. So, maybe a patient is received who has a problem with the sodium potassium pumps, maybe he has a problem with the energy generation, maybe he has he is hypoxic. So, sodium potassium pump is not working correctly and he his intracellular fluid volume is increased due to that or maybe you have received a patient who is on diuretics and so he is losing a lot of volume through the blood vessels which is then causing the other volumes to be affected. Maybe you have received a patient who has been drinking and vomiting maybe you have received a patient who has been having diarrhea or maybe you received a patient who did a lot of strenuous exercise being muscular and great and now he has uh, caused so much sweat to be lost that he is having the uh, volume effects of that. Maybe a patient is received from uh, dehydration who did not drink water for a long time. So, when you receive a maybe antidiuretic hormone is not in correct balance maybe the mineralocorticoid is. So, when you receive a patient in the hospital then you cannot assume that his body volumes are going to be intact. So, in that case it sometimes becomes necessary to measure the actual volume to understand what is going on. So, to understand that how do we measure let us establish some rules for measurement. So, the rules for measuring are these. So, let us say this is total body water we know it is divided into ICF and ECF and then we know that the ECF is then divided into interstitial and intravascular right. So, intravascular interstitial ICF this is ECF and this is ICF good. It may be necessary at some point to measure the volume inside the cells. So, can you go to every single cell and measure the volume that is probably going to be a difficult process or not doable at least nowadays. Can you uh, measure the interstitial volume? Can you go between the cells and measure the volume of fluid present in there? Uh, probably it is going to be difficult. Can you measure the volume inside the blood vessels? You cannot just take the blood out of the blood vessels that would be uh, of course, life threatening. So, there has to be some way of trying to understand or measuring the blood volume with some accuracy which we can then use to treat the patient. So, the way it is done is this. So, if I go here 
and let's say let's say i have a compartment let's say the compartment is a and then let's say i have an injection so <clears throat> i have two compartments here one compartment is this syringe so let's say this is compartment a this is compartment b now inside these compartment a or the syringe contains some substance so of course that substance has a concentration right so for example let's say in our example we have 1 mg of the substance present in 1 ml and this is total 1 ml 1 ml so you have to be able to know the exact quantities before you actually can do this measurement so we are we have one injection over here which has gotten some known quantity of a of a substance present in a known quantity of the volume so please remember they both have to be known so let's say in this range we have 1 ml of the sub, of the fluid volume in that we have 1 mg of the substance so how would i write that is i would say that the mass of substance whatever that substance is let's say x equals the concentration multiplied by the volume correct so that would be the mass of x now how do we measure let's say this is our body total body water and we want to measure what is the total amount of water present in our body and we don't want to calculate that from the weight that the weight is 70 kg and take the 60% we actually want to know the accurate body volume so in that case what we would do is we'll treat this as the as the compartment b and we would inject this substance in here we would let it disperse out equally so that that means we'll give it some time and after that we would measure a sample from here so how does that all work so let me say it this way in the beginning this substance x is not present here right so can i say that there is no substance x so if you took a sample if you took a sample of a part of this fluid that would come up empty there'll be no substance x no substance x correct right there is nothing in there now let's say we have injected this all in here and we have then allowed we have allowed it to stay in there for long enough that we have gotten the concentration equally established so what would that mean that would mean 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 nine. so these substances have gone in here and they, that has become equally dispersed so now if i do a division and if i take a sample out so let's say these are all milliliters and what i'm seeing is that i have 1 ml 1 mg per milliliter or or 0.1 mg per milliliter then i can use this formula what i can say is this i can say that the the mass of compartment a should be equal to the mass in the compartment b this is assuming that nothing was sub subtracted that means patient did not develop any hemorrhages he did not lose fluid in the renal system he did not lose fluid through the git system and so on and if he is doing it then you have to subtract that from the primary uh, compartment so the formula is going to be that the mass in a is going to be equal to mass in b and how do we see that we would say that concentration of a this concentration 1 mg multiplied by the volume of a 